Hey guys, what's up? So we're gonna meet Alistair Morel, one of the leading spirits and wine and beer and cider consultant for UK market. Amazing dinner, but more importantly, how to navigate in 2024. So check it out, enjoy this talk, solid value, if you're a producer trying to enter the UK market. from London, Sid from London Spirits Competition. I have here Alistair Morel here with me. We're sitting in a lovely setting here in the traditional London neighborhood pub. We'll chat about how brands can navigate in 2024 and let's pick his brain mainly on, you know, a penetrating distribution, growing your sales. If you're already here, you know, finding an importer, what are importers really looking for in a partnership in 2024? Alistair, thanks for joining me here. Hey, uh, absolute pleasure. I mean, this is a proper London pub. And we're talking about booze in a London pub. Um, you know, this market is an incredibly challenging market. Uh, the UK is one of the most fiercely competitive with thousands of thousands of brands wanting to sell here. Uh, no shortage of that, that's for sure. Um, but how do you actually do that? And it's actually quite complicated to navigate. Um, you've got to make yourself visible. You've got to make yourself transparent. And if you can get business, then you have to secure that business and find an importer immediately. Um, just turning up here with product and saying, well, here I am, and expecting everybody to come and flock around you, that's not going to happen because there's too much choice. So focus on what are, what are your USPs? How do you differentiate yourself from the competition? It's so, absolutely so let's just, critical. You know, uh, go a little deeper into that, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's double click. What should be the USPs? What are the USPs that importers or retailers, like the big chains or even stores like Odd Bins, are paying attention to? You know, we've been hearing a lot of things around sustainability, for example, right? Or, or diversity. So I, I give me some like, USPs that if someone was making a new brand today, they would focus with this. So um, sustainability, I wouldn't, I would not lead with. It cannot. It needs to be an underscore of of what your uh, brand is about. But if you look at the general trends of the market, less but better is what. Uh, really uh, describes how consumers are behaving. As we uh, go forward towards the uh, 2030s, lifestyle describes uh, how people want to drink. And that is less alcohol, but better quality. So um, what does better quality mean? Quality is a massively overused word that actually means whatever it wants to be subjectively. So it's up to us to describe what quality means to the consumer and that has to be done in ways that are relatable um, provenance is a very important word terroir is an important concept to understand um, what why what you do um, means quality if you think about the tech industry and how that approaches things it's about perfection it's about perfection at every level and that is why in which producers need to approach this market is you got to you got to show that you're and you've got to communicate about it you've no. got to you know so everything has got to be communicated uh, from what you do to actually the result in the market, how it ends up on the label, what it do you do in the press release, how you approach your customers. Everything has got to sew this thread up all the way around. And, and that quality remains an, a, a sort of an abstract concept only created in the eye of the beholder. So let's let's draw a little bit different uh, path here. UK yeah. culture, like just a basic culture, like you know, football or soccer or cricket or whatever you want to call it. Throw five to six things that you should 
suppliers should really understand, like, you know, maybe even beer categories, you know, uh, but how do you, like, be very good culturally prepared and respect that culture before sort of starting to make that relationships? Well, I, I mean, I would say the British culture, it, almost like uh, never, other, it, never any other previous time, is anything goes. And, and actually, it is more uh, freewheeling in a certain sense than at any other time. So, uh, yes, we are increasingly respectful of LGBT. We are uh, very uh, diverse uh, aware as well. Again, Again, more than at any other time, and I, you know, maybe I'd be uh, 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 suggestive to say that more than any other country in the world as well, perhaps, um, because of the the history that we have. Um, so, uh, in, on the, on that side of things, be aware that we are uh, very sensitive to other cultures. Uh, we're embracing London is uh, now more than fifty percent. Uh, of people born in other nations than, uh, than than Britain, football is still our number one sport, and people love that. Uh, that's not to say that rugby, cricket, uh, and other things aren't uh, followed as well, but uh, football is clearly is clearly number one. Um, and uh, increasingly, we love our food and drink as well. We become more and more passionate about it. We see it on TV. Uh, we see it uh, in in every facet of life. Wine appears everywhere uh, these days. TV shows, and that's what it is part of our our culture. You know, uh, what else have you? you know, what have, what are you seeing? Uh, what how has it? How are things different? You know. Uh, how are you going to play? Let's say if you were a brand owner, you know, how would you play 2024 to wrap it up? I mean, what would be your strategy for UK? So be aware, the general climate is is uncertain, and and they're likely to be so. It's going to be a bit rocky for uh, the the twenties as a whole, I think. Um, so you have to be risk assessed. You know, if you're going to go play one strategy, then uh, what is uh, what? the opposite could happen. Do you know what you're going to do if the opposite happens? So assess your risks very, very carefully. Um, uh, don't be afraid either. You know, uh, he who dares wins. Um, she who dares wins. Um, you know, you have to uh, be in it to win it, as they say. So actually being totally risk averse is not going to get you anywhere. So this is a very difficult equation, of course, um, but therefore I think uh, those that have carefully understood the risks and take the brave step forward will probably be the winners in the end. So if you were defining your consumer, who is your consumer, what is their age, what is their demographic, you know, let's go the drinks, uh, the choice of the drink for that consumer you know, from Alistair, right? So I'm going to ask you some rapid questions. Let's play some rapid fire here <laughs> yeah. for, for the other consumers, like all, all of you consumers of UK, you know, add your comments here so we know that you are agreeing with him. Or if you're not, add your, you know, drinks choice. So let me go there. 18 to 25, what are they drinking? If it was one category. Uh, mocktails. Wow. 25 to 35. Uh, wine. 25 to 35, meal. Uh, beer. 35 to 45, female. Wine. 35 to 45, meal. Uh, cocktails is now yes and no is 35 to 45 the main highest paying best consumer or you think for the wine or you think it's 45 to 60 uh, no I think it's probably uh, 55 plus and uh, you know the wine industry is doing what the wine industry does not engage with uh, younger generations more all right, now uh, let's go back there. 45 to 55, men. Uh, wine. 
Wow, so much wine, huh? I mean, you know, wine you, is now a... You're whiskey or gin or... Wine is a third of the market here. Bear in mind that 50 years ago, wine was uh, about 5% of the market. So, you know, wine has changed the whole uh, way that people drink in this country. And I would propose that in the next 10 years and 20 years, it will change again. And that will be down to wine's conservatism. On the cider, your favorite subject, right? My favorite subject. Define. But can I correct you? Sure. It's wines from apples, pears, and other fruits, and they are wines. So let's go there. So you just told me that wines in the history, uh, you know, definition was very different than what people understand. Yeah. They think that it's from grapes. So elaborate on that. What did you mean? Like, and how does cider fit into that? So the English dictionary definition of wine is an alcoholic drink made from any fruit or flower. Um, we have a very Europeanized view of what wine is made from grapes um, because Europe produces so much uh, wine. But in actual fact, um, you know, it's not just about that. These products are made just as passionately by any maker um, as, as any grape winemaker. And they're representative of their terroir, where they come from, how they've been produced, what they're produced with, different varieties. Um, you know, they're representative of the passion of the pr producer. Um, and they're low intervention. They're fermented. They're not brewed. They're not distilled. They're fermented, which is a low intervention process. You have to allow nature to govern a certain amount of your output of your, of your drink. So we advocate that uh, in my organization, Cider is Wine, that these, these drinks uh, deserve our appreciation as much as any fine wine. And, uh, and, and we predict as well, I think with some certainty, that the market will be a substantive market in the next uh, 10 years, worth about 150 million pounds. Nice. One last one on the biggest myths, you know, uh, consumers have around cider, like misconceptions. Um, that cider is made from apples. I can testify most, that. Most of it in the UK is made from concentrate. And in actual fact, uh, if you make from concentrate, uh, um, which you're allowed to do 100%, then a 75 centiliter equivalent bottle will have the juice of less than one apple in it. What's the number two and three um, myth around cider? Um, that the British are the best at it. I don't think we are. Uh, I think that we need to reassert our lizard. According well, to, I don't According like, to a Brit, who's the best? I mean, you could argue that the United States is the, is the best right now because they don't have the baggage that the United Kingdom has. Uh, there are 1,100 cideries there. Um, they really see themselves as uh, forging a, a new modern drinks category. Go get them, Floyd, is what I say. And I, I think oh, one third one as we were chatting, people think it's like a beer category or a beer. And it's absolutely not. Cider, when made from 100% juice, not from concentrate, so i.e. like wine, to leave beer. Is, is absolutely wine. It's wine from apples, pears, and other fruits. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not beer. Beer is brewed, right? And brewing requires a heat source. Fermentation, uh, when it's from the whole fruit, does not require a heat source. It creates the heat from the sugars itself. And if you were just, you know, starting cider, like our young cider drinkers here, you know, what would be five or six brand names? Throw some good names people can try in London. Uh, the cider, you know, uh, just to try out if you're just starting. So, um, off the top of my head, then I would say uh, try Liam Tinston, uh, try Eden from uh, Vermont in the US, try Riestra from Astorius in Spain, try Templar's Choice, try Ramborn from Luxembourg. You know, been making ciders from Roman times, so, I mean, uh, really quite uh, uh, historic. Try Branland from Sweden, try Abel from New Zealand, try Quebrada del Chuco from Chile, you know, um, uh, try uh, King and Queen of the Orchard from Derbyshire in the UK, or Blue Aurora from uh, Northamptonshire. Um, 
I mean, there's so many. It's a fascinating new landscape of taste and experience.